Okay, it's a technology part is now done. Let me try to be intelligible, for which we need social sciences. Uh, actually, uh, I mean, as you would, uh, we would uh, discuss in the course of this interview, that this book is a product of the circumstances, that the crisis that we're going through. So it's a book, uh, it, there are various causes. I mean, I can talk about the causes of the book that I know, uh, that led me to write this book, uh, and how I wrote it. Uh, rather than getting into the details of this book, because the, it is the reader's right and it is reader's sovereignty to decide what is written in it. So, uh, due to this book, actually, I have traveled across the state of Maharashtra, and in one, of, one and a half years, I have done 65 uh, programs everywhere. So, that kind of thing and the responsibility that I see uh, as somebody who is invited everywhere in Maharashtra, and when I learn, because I'm in JNU, and these things, uh, uh, this thing happened that you know the government of Maharashtra cancelled the already declared award, and the process by which they cancelled, like you know, uh, in my letter that went pretty viral, I said that there are in some countries there is some degree of substantive democracy. There is no absolute democracy because absolute democracy doesn't exist, will not exist, but one has to posit it. Uh, in some countries, democratic countries, there is some degree of substantive democracy. In some countries, at least they pretend to be democratic. But in Maharashtra, the way this award was cancelled, they, they didn't find it necessary to pretend to be democratic. Like, <coughs> simple one GR, because somebody wrote a letter, uh, and that letter, उन्होंने दिया हुआ जो अवार्ड है कैंसल कर दिया। So it's like kind of you know it's not just about that book. I mean I had not read that that book by that time. It is not about the nature of the book. That is second aspect. Even if you want to cancel the award, at least have some democratic process. The process by which it was given, there was no. I mean the people of Maharashtra was not. They were not taken into confidence. Nothing. Then I took a decision that I should I should return my award because it's the disrespect and humiliation of all those who are engaged in intellectual, literary, artistic activities, and this is the very symptomatic of our times. So for this reason, I cancelled that award. And actually, uh, in Maharashtra, uh, people appreciated the gesture. Yeah, I, I did it because because for my conscience. Uh, because many people thought that there is a backlash, there will be trolling, then I was equated with urban naxals. I said that when I was in Maharashtra, in every program, there is civil society, there is a student. Why don't you ask me all of these things about JNU, which is a gang, urban naxal, which is a trolling, 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 which is a trolling. I said to be regressive, it takes no courage. To be progressive, it takes intellectual efforts, it takes, uh, it takes intellectual efforts, courage, and some noble idea of human nature. And to be regressive, it, it doesn't take any courage. It takes cowardice. And it takes intellectual laziness and collapse of any ethics, if there is any. So I said, when I go to Maharashtra, I will ask you a question. I will ask you a question. So now, in 60, 65 programs in Maharashtra, I will ask you a question. I will ask you a question. When you ask me a question, how will you ask me a question? नहीं पूछते, so that is the context. Context of this book is rather complex. I just while reading the book one understands, but like basic context is that mother tongue, my mother tongue is not Marathi. My mother tongue is like yours, Mal Malwani, one of those many languages that do not find their place in our constitution. So you know, like and it's I I'm coming from that North Maharashtra, Dubia के पास छोटा सा गांव है. And thousand twelve hundred population है जहाँ पे नाम मात्र बढ़ाई होती है इस डॉलर की मैं स्पीक इन इंग्लिश हिंदी हिंदी को हाँ तो वहाँ पे अहिरानी बोली जाती है जो मेरी मदर टंग है और वहाँ पे गांव में कोई मराठी नहीं बोलता है और स्कूलिंग स्कूलिंग जो प्राइमरी स्कूलिंग हमारी नाम मात्र मतलब वहाँ पे टीचर भी सेमी मराठी � that we have at home, when we kind of leave our village, we have to abandon that linguistic capital and cultural capital, and we have to learn a new language when we reach higher education. 
So when I left my village, uh, like you know, in '95 the book starts in '95 when I flunked in my tenth. That's why my boss, our all student fail हो जाते हैं, मैं भी fail हो गया क्योंकि उस साल वो score आ गया और हम नकल नहीं कर पाए, सब fail हो गए. तो मतलब ये सब गांव की इंडिया में सभी रूरल स्पेसेस की कहानी है। तो जिस साल मेरा दसवीं का एग्जाम था उस साल अंग्रेजी के पेपर के दौरान स्कॉट बैठा रहा तीन घंटे हम कुछ लिख नहीं पाए फिर भी मुझे अठारह मार्क मिल गए मुझे पता नहीं कैसे मिल गए तो फिर 95 टू 99 तो मेरा जो एजुकेशन है वो हाईवेज है मतलब मैं कभी गैराज में काम करता था कभी टैक्सी चलाता था कभी ये बहुत सारे ऐसे काम किए फिर नाइन्टी में हमारे महाराष्ट्र में कहते कि बाहरून परीक्षा देने मतलब आप कॉलेज वॉलेज में जाओ बाहर से एग्जाम दे सकते हैं आप देन दैट इज द बिगिनिंग ऑफ माई एक्चुअली Formal education, ninety-nine, and then I had to abandon my language, mother tongue, and also the language that I had somehow acquired during my schooling, that is Marathi language. Or English is not there, but it is not there. 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 And the mandate of JNU, uh, and how it is, you know, uh, created to cater to those weaker sections and all that. Actually, one that is not a very honourable way of couching the things. We are not from weaker sections. We are from weakened sections. We are from deprived sections. And weaker sections, there is something wrong with us. All right. No, the language you speak at home. You find the continuity of that cultural and linguistic capital in the institutions in higher education. So you are not uh, strong; you are privileged. There is a difference. So we come from that background, and uh, and you know these kind of things. I'm a little bit blunt, and right now I will say there are certain things I might say, and I take the full responsibility of it because when I will talk about the the, the immediate trigger of the book was the the technocrat the. Who ruined this university, and uh, who I happened to be uh, in the executive council, and I saw him from close quarters. I was trying to see if there is any human content to him. Oh. I was trying. I was trying to see if there is any anthropological content to him, but I, all I saw is zoological matter. Which <laughs> made he was he was so dehumanized to the core. एक घंटा तक हम हाथ हाथ ऊपर करते थे लेकिन हमें बोलने का मौका नहीं दिया जाता लाइक एक्सप्लिसिट ह्यूमिलिएशन ऑफ द इलेक्टेड रिप्रेजेंटेटिव इन द एग्जिक काउंसिल मोस्टमी सचिदानंद हम बैठे हैं कभी कभार मोस्टमी हैड दैट आई डोंट नो हाउ शी कुड मैनेज शी कुड स्पीक बट मैं तो मुझे तो सेकेंड पे बिठाया जाता है पहले तो मतलब हम तो कास्ट क्लास जेंडर वगैरह बट एजिज्म भी बहुत बड़ा प्रॉब्लम है हिंदुस्तान में मैं मतलब कम उम्र होना मतलब ऑलरेडी कुछ प्रॉब्लम है ये जरन टॉक रस्सी के प्रॉब्लम में फेस करता हूं क्योंकि मैं 44 एक्जेक्टली टुडे टुडे इज माय बर्थडे और तो अब Uh, then I used to kind of you know for one hour I used to raise my hand I was not given the chance to speak. So the hatred of democracy, hatred of reason. These people. Then I told you know one gentleman who is also a senior professor in history. I told him. I said, "You will not be able to speak here, but in Maharashtra, I will go to the village and speak. I will stop there. And now I am stopping. So I decided, and then uh, this is a product of my anger. मैं रात में जाकर आयरानी में लिखता था एंड इट इस तो वो वायरल और उसी में एक पोस्ट लिखा जो वन मेमोरी दैट आई रोट वन एंड हाफ पेज एंड देन पब्लिशर्स स्टार्टेड कॉलिंग मी दैट कैन यू राइट द सीरीज ऑफ दिस तो इनिशियली सम काइंड ऑफ यू नो डिलेटेंट पब्लिशर्स पर अप्रोचिंग मी एंड देन व्हेन लोक वांग we want to publish it. मैंने कहा कि कॉम्प्रेड पब्लिश करने जा रहे हैं तो मतलब कुछ अच्छा ही लिखा होगा। तो देखो हम क्रिटिसाइज करते हैं मतलब जेन इज़ नॉट दैट होमोजेनस 
monolithic my friends know sometimes how brutal i am it is not that kind of you know so mono it's so heterogeneous it's so but we know that we belong to the same paradigm of progressive politics and we are differentially situated we have our differences we critique each other but we reject the divine supreme divine leader to north korea ka bhi yahan se chala gaya we reject them because they have hatred for logic they have hatred for education they have hatred for the very idea of democracy yeah. but one of the figures that you really valorize is your mother who spoke in ahirani was not very educated had studied only till the fifth but you have repeatedly through the book talked about the kind of grassroots uh, intelligence that she had and she became in one sense your sounding board and has been your sounding board throughout your life somebody you speak to in ahirani and what's interesting is right at the beginning of the book you also talk about a moment of food transgression if i may put it that yes. way where you say that you have failed your exam 10th you haven't been able to pass your english exam your mother tells you to cheer up and you ask her for the egg which you were a vegetarian till then so i think this moment of transgression expressed through food and then your desire to acquire mastery over english can we in some sense see that as a way of entering into a new world and a new world of knowledge because you also talk about how before that you were very superstitious and now suddenly you're thinking very differently and then you go to dhule and you enter the college the jai hind college you also talked about how an educational opportunity or an infrastructure for university helps you develop as a as a person and as a thinker yeah see uh, like you know here interacting with this frighteningly intelligent audience is easy actually they are actually they are already in good faith uh, and even if i deploy good amount of ratio reason it's sufficient but then when we interact there it's very very heterogeneous contradictory there along with ratio one has to use oratio means bit of political experience uh, rhetoric and all that so and but actually that's what my background was because i didn't have that right from the beginning that formal conditioning and training into the jargon so i was like anybody who is like has become bhakt mai bhi bhakti tha matlab maine bhi teen saal rss ko diye aise thodi hai theek hai to aur mai gaon mein jo hamare yahan pe swadhyay naam ka ek hota hai baba hote bahut sare tumhala to maithi se swadhyay wagaire ha baitha ka chalta hai तो मैं गांव में मैं उसमें फ्रंट लाइन में बैठने वाला उतना धार्मिक था तो फिर मैंने और मैं बिल्कुल भगवान में वगैरह विश्वास वगैरह तो मुझे लगता था दसवीं तो फेल ही नहीं होना चाहिए था और इतना पुण्य करने के बावजूद भी दसवीं में फेल हो गया मैं तो फिर वो दिन मेरा काफी बुरा गया तो फिर गुस्सा था वो माँ बोले खा तो ले भाई मराठी आयरानी में उसका जो पॉपुलर विजडम कहा कि एक साल में भगवान बुरा नहीं होता अगले साल फिर मेला भरेगा और फिर एग्जाम दे देना तो क्यों मैंने कहा ऐसा कर अब ये ना अंडा भुजी बना दे मुझे तब तक मैं स्ट्रिक्ट वेजिटेरियन था मैंने कहा रिवेंज ऑन दो गॉड्स तब तब से दैट इज एंड कैंड ऑफ when i came to jnu uh, this then there is kind of you know series of transgressions i would call uh, and uh, like you know this inside outside this thing uh, there are many insides and many outsides and there are many entries and every entry is guarded by maxwell's demon if you do not have that requisite charge you are thrown out so you have to dodge you have to and that's that's how you know i have reached this this place uh, and that's what you know uh, as anarin says that the notion of freedom has this dual dimension one is uh, its objective dimension uh, that is liberty and the subjective dimension that is like you know something integral to human nature and everybody has that aspiration for freedom but if there is no objective condition like liberating condition that that aspiration freedom will be frustrated and then you will live that alienated existence so i mean it's so not that uh, the notion of freedom is something very unique to the western culture it is it is 
it is kind of integral, intrinsic uh, quality of human nature. But our society uh, does not offer those objective conditions where an, uh, we can liberate ourselves, I mean, we can uh, express our freedom. So, uh, because you know, why this book is commented upon by uh, most of the stalwarts in Maharashtra, because it's not just about that, you know, rags to riches trajectory. Uh, had it been that, uh, I wouldn't have bothered to write. So it's like, you know, analyzing what it means to witness uh, education driven social mobility in a country like ours, where there are deep inequalities. And sometimes we try, we try to conceal it some, you know, fancy words, mosaic. I'm not critiquing this one, but like, you know, diversity and all that. But actually, there are inequalities. And most of us, we have that verticality to, uh, you know, uh, we, have, we have to go that vertical movement. And some people have, very few have that horizontal. So that difference is there. So uh, I happen to get some opportunities because Jain College, which is a very good college in that region. Uh, infrastructure was excellent. Uh, the principal was excellent. He was visionary. After that, I benefited uh, from IFLU's infrastructure. But then I came to JNU, it was an entirely different environment. And these liberating conditions allowed me to express my freedom. In the absence of these liberating conditions, uh, if you say you are free to do, it's meaningless. The notion of freedom is to be implemented with a set of institutions. And those institutions are under attack today. Yeah. Like freedom is all oh, you are free, it doesn't mean anything. You are free, it doesn't mean anything because in order to actualize your freedom, you need to have those liberating objective conditions and a society like ours is deeply liberty side. Kills the notion of liberty at every step. Uh, and it's not very liberating. So the project like JNU and most of these, at least institutions on paper are liberating. So I'll just give a small example that will contrast JNU uh, to IFLU. Because uh, one of my masters, the first master is from IFLU. At that time it was CIAFL. So, Right now, I teach French literature and philosophy in JNU, but uh, like my graduation is in English literature, first post graduation is in uh, English literature and cultural studies. But then how I ended up being a teacher of French literature and philosophy here, there's a story to it, and that will allow us to understand the difference between JNU and the rest of the institutions. Right. That so this is the Lucknow. Lucknow thing. Yeah. Right, because you've spoken, in fact, What's interesting about the book is that it's also populated with characters who have helped you in your journey and have been friends and mentors and partners, co-partners in this journey. So in EFLU, where you've talked about this kind of a commercialized environment of education, and I'd also like to tell you that this book emerged against the backdrop of students agitating for cheap education, because if you remember, there was this huge, uh, you know, agitation in JNU and that is a very telling story because you talked about the commercialization of education and how you were humiliated because you wanted to study French because you wanted to reach read French philosophy in French right so yeah so when I joined CIEFL that is now IFLU uh, uh, so there used to be evening evening uh, courses French uh, for French uh, and I think Ajit Kanna, if he's here, he was teaching there in IFLU. So I inquired about uh, the courses uh, for, French, uh, for the French language and they said that it would cost some two to three thousand rupees. I said I don't have that money. Then I was a bit dis disappointed, I came back and then Ajit was also on the campus. So I asked him, uh, is it possible I just sit there uh, and I don't need any uh, degree or uh, I just want to sit there. And he said, no problem, I mean, there are empty chairs and you can sit in one of those chairs, so no problem. And even initially the director was also kind of, you know, uh, understanding. So two or three sessions I attended there and somebody from the administration complained that I am committing a huge illegality of attending those classes without paying. Then I was summoned, humiliated and was asked to write an apology letter. Uh, I wrote it. And I found that there is something terribly wrong there. Those rules, that, you know, people who try to govern the society with rules. You know that, that, that like Dr. Babasaheb Ambedkar writes in uh, the Buddha and his Dhamma, that rules, either you break them or they break you. So there are kind of set of people who are above the rules, 
an overwhelming uh, part of our society are below the rules, and the rules are used to crush them. And they simply use this rule to deprive me of that you know, infrastructure. That was every government infrastructure. Then I got angry and I decided I will learn this language on my own. So Ajit Kanna helped me because on his card I could issue as many books as I want. Cassettes, it was the kind of you know era of cassettes. I used to borrow those cassettes. And I studied the material that is to be studied for four years in one and a half years and I started reading French philosophy in French. Uh, and I didn't have any formal degree. Uh, but when I came to JNU, JNU was not governed by those rigid rules. JNU was governed by a set of principles. Because <laughs> principles give you that latitude. That latitude, there is every case is a unique case and there is a flexibility and uh, it, here faculty is used to evaluate every situation and accordingly if somebody wants to work, somebody wants to, uh, you know, there are some issues. So, and this man who just demolished to a great extent the JNU was governed by the notion of uh, those uh, rules, that infallible rules, that Manuadi Man Sikta. Uh, and this, this the rules wale hai, Manuadi hai, unko bolna pata hai, Brahminical hai. और इस शब्द से आप नफरत मत करो हम बहुत बोलते हैं कि रेमेडी करना ये करना है जब डायग्नोसिस नहीं होगा तो काय का रेमेडी करेंगे आप आपको डायग्नोसिस ही नहीं करना है सो इन दिस बुक देयर इज अ क्रिटिक ऑफ यू नो दैट यू नो दिस वी आर हियर टू प्रोवाइड रेमेडियल क्लासेस नो बट यू हैव टू डू द डायग्नोसिस आई सी मेनी स्टॉलवर्ड्स इन दिस कैंपस बट टू स्टॉलवर्ड्स सम ऑफ देम और मोस्ट ऑफ देम हैव समथिंग दैट दे हैव कंट्रीब्यूटेड इज अ बट ह्यूज पार्ट ऑफ दैट is to those shoulders on which they are standing and standing tall. So everybody is not a stalwart because some people, many of them have to do what 10 generations have done. So it's not that the competition is unfair. So Jane was in that regard, uh, I mean, partly of course, we also kind of, you know, serve the purpose of token. I mean, I, I agree with uh, Harish that, you know, yesterday, when he said that this paternalistic is that weaker section and we are there, this philanthropic, I absolutely, I agree with him. So that then one has to learn that, you know, justice means adjustment thoda side ho jau. On my behalf, don't speak. So ye wali baat hai, ye jab tak nahi samaj mein aayega. Because right now we are all on the same page, because we know the enemy. But there are some fault lines and it can lead to antagonisms and we belong to very different, different points of departure. And points of departure are not in our hands. Somebody is born in that caste, in that body, in that region, but point of arrival is in our hand. So that understanding about point of arrival, if we have that, I think we can work around these points of departure. But we, if we are in bad faith that, you know, just tactical alliance, the tactical alliance will be very nuksan in Hindustan. So tactical alliance will be language in the language of the If we are here, uh, and if we are with you, we are not for you, we are for some cause. You know, this is the kind of line I'm quoting from Caligula, Albert Camus. Just because we are with you, don't take us for granted. We are not for you, we are for the cause. And we know, because uh, I happen to criticize uh, some of our, uh, you know, uh, friends in the GBM, Bahar Nikalte Mujhe Hamare right wing toast ne pakar liya. Sharaj ji, aap toh bhoat unko toh blast kar diya. Man kare, ye toh khush ho raha hai. और ऊपर से मैं ओबीसी मतलब आशा बढ़ जाती है तो मैंने कहा भाई उनको क्रिटिक करता हूं तुम्हें रिजेक्ट करता हूं फर्क है You've already spoken about Lucknow, but in JNU you've also spoken about how the environment here ensured that you could actually pace your education in many ways. You took up a job at the French Culture Center. That opened up doorways for you because you had to support yourself economically right through your education. It was never easy for you. So what did that shift or that encounter with the French Culture Center and the kind of intellectual environment it provided do to you? And then, of course, the Erasmus Mundus scholarship that you got. Because that marks a shift, again, in your intellectual environment. And also just the fact that 
you now see yourself as a kind of a cosmopolitan intellectual. That's also a term that you've used in translation in Marathi. But uh, tell us about this. Uh, because 100 odd pages are about JNU. Like JNU I experienced as a student when I came here in 2004-05. Uh, and JNU when I joined as a teacher. And JNU post-2016. Uh, sorry, 2016 what happened to JNU and from that, you know, that inside take on JNU and what makes JNU JNU? Actually, you know, here students select us, in the sense, students, here it's like uh, JNU, they are the reason of being of JNU uh, and they have made this program actually uh, such a huge success uh, because when you go outside this campus, we have to, we have to look for the audience. Uh, of our kind, they are actually student selectors. Uh, so JNU has played that, uh, definitely JNU has been that decisive moment in my life. When I came to JNU, till that point I was, actually I didn't come to Delhi for JNU, I came to Delhi for, to work in the French Embassy. Uh, and I was working there as assistant researcher and for some time I was their education coordinator uh, for their higher education. Uh, till that point I, I had no degree in French, uh, no formal education in French. Uh, and then a friend of mine, Samuel Berthe, he said that there is a university called JNU where you don't have to have any prior degree in order to do your master's in any discipline provided you succeed in the entrance exam. I said, there is an university in the same way. I didn't know it. I am talking 2004. And then I appeared for the entrance exam and I joined here but then I had to work uh, uh, in the embassy so the center was quite uh, lenient about me. They knew that he's working in the French embassy. So, uh, my Sade Art Baje Kalam Bolo 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 so, I don't have an obsession. 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 I don't have थोड़ा सा मैं सटायर भी किया है किताब में कि जैसे मैं आया था तो मतलब जिस तरह के I'm not criticizing because if students are studying here you know with what uh, 250 rupees per semester it is because of this student unions and all that and one has to recognize its relevance but at the same time we know that we we have we are we are in you know, a progressive but at the same time we know that that progressive politics or logic is also instrumentalized. And I have a good number of examples that, you know, instrumentalization of progressive uh, thought and progressive politics. That is worse than being regressive. At least, in me, I mean, we are not like that. But the regressive and progressive instrumentalization is that one has to learn to identify and detect it. And actually, my training in political philosophy and uh, proper philosophy gave me that insight. So, I said, look, uh, because it's when we are in good faith, we, uh, when we are in bad faith, we know that uh, something gender is at work, but then we use caste category. We know that language is at work, then we use gender category when we are in bad faith. Because as I studied, we understood there are systems and subsystems of injustice, and there are many factors, many categories on which this injustice takes place. Uh, but then, like language is a huge factor. Uh, people are muted. Uh, we do not realize that, you know, uh, how hostile we come across. And we don't, because that we are so much, so much into navel gazing that we do not know what the other things. We are so much into our own perception. Uh, and what is that objective perception? How it is perceived outside this uh, campus? For that, one has to become organic. And that's where I think somewhere in last 20 years, if not the founding pillars of JNU, but last 20, 30 years, JNU has failed in my eyes because when I go to like you know villages and all that uh, there is a critic and let us see if there is any substance to it that you know Jain people practice what we call in literary theories mall roads point of view mall road point of view jo 
Masuri classes would give them data and they would write something theoretical about it and ek aap unki London Paris Berkeley ki tarah bhi rahe. So and English mein likh sakte the is kitab ko. Global market milta. Mainke yehi to gad bad kar gaye hum log. Global market yaha ka pura political RSS le gaya usme global market ki padi hai. So let's okay. So let's look at what you use the term genuine exceptionalism and the belief that uh, we are somehow uh, in a position where if we say something or we are attacked, lots of people from around the world speak up on behalf of genuine. When some such thing unfolds in a smaller university or even another university in Delhi, such as. It happened in Jamia Milia Islamia, and you've been very critical of the fact that people speak up when it's JNU, but don't necessarily speak up when it's another university like Jamia. When they are subjected to violence, when they're subjected to all kinds of infiltrations into their intellectual life, there's a failure to speak up. So, would you like to say something about Yeah, and it is something like, you know, uh, reflective of our uh, social biases. Uh, if something happens, like you know that I have said that you know, जब JNU में कुछ होता है, मतलब JNU को कम से कम उसका रोना तो दिखाई देता है ना दुनिया को, लेकिन बाकी जगह पे रोना क्या उनका मतलब कत्ल हो रहा है किसी की नजर में भी नहीं आता है। ये जो है, I find JNU privileged। मतलब जैसे कि मैंने जब आप कुछ लोगों को पता होगा छह महीने पहले मेरे साथ ही कांड हो गया था। हो गया था ना मेरा अपहरण कर लिया गया था तो अब एस्टरडे ओनली दिस ऐसे चोर नारायणा कॉल्ड मी मैंने कहा चार पांच महीने को मैं याद नहीं अभी भाई कल एग्जाम है मुझे फिर हॉन्ट करना है तुम लोगों को नहीं नहीं सर वो एसबीआई के स्टेटमेंट दे दीजिएगा अभी हमें चार शीट फाइल करनी है बट इफ यू and after that, a massive response and massive support and solidarity and three days people were arrested. In 24 hours, FI was lodged. It is because I come from a particular caste. If there is no caste in my place or no religion, then it will be lodged to FI. I'll tell you. This happened because a massive support from Maharashtra and people were sitting in the system and said, how can it be done with their own knowledge? ये जो है तो उसमें एक्चुअली आई एम प्रिविलेज्ड एंड मुझे लगता है कि मैं बार बार ऐसे दाढ़ी खींचते खींचते उसने पूंछ को लगा कि मैं कोई मुस्लिम होगा क्योंकि डेट वाज देर फर्स्ट उन वीडियो बनाया मुझे मुझे गांधी जी बनाकर बिठा था ना उन्होंने और वीडियो बना वीडियो बना रहे थे sick about our society uh, and and actually I got the response from you know Maharashtra and everywhere and Delhi police commissioners and monitoring Horata and all the support I think not because of what I am uh, by my own achievement or uh, work because of the class I, I was born in so this this is something that you know very difficult to undo but one has to undo it one has to recognize one's privileges uh, and see you know, how we can actually uh, create a relatively just order. I mean, there is no absolute order, but just order, and that's what actually I recognize. And this is actually, you can see, you know, take examples. Kuch koi arrest hota hai, to pura bawal ho jata hai. Koi sarta hai, to uh, jail mein koi farak nahi padta hai. To ye jo ho raha hai, ye aisa hi hai. Jainu pe hamla hota hai, to solidarity, protest, even uh, dar jata hai, uh, jo hamare Nagpuri mitra baitha hai. <laughs> नहीं नहीं मैं बताऊं मैं महाराष्ट्र के अभी छोटे गांव से लेकर बड़े शहर में प्रोग्राम कर रहा हूं मुझे मेरी प्रायोरिटी समझता हूं मैं तो जेएनयू हैज इमर्ज एज दैट एक्चुअली बुलवाक ओके आई मीन वी हैव आवर प्रिविलेजेस बट देन वी आर आल्सो ट्राइंग टू वर्क अप टू दैट एक्सपेक्टेशन दैट इज आल्सो देयर वन हैज टू गिव दैट क्रेडिट टू जेएनयू एंड उनको जेएनयू का खौफ है ऐसा नहीं कि नहीं है तो लेकिन वो कंबाइन करना पड़ेगा जेनियो एस एस कैंड ऑफ यू नो इट स्टैंड्स फॉर रीजन एंड उसके साथ व्हाट वी कॉल राज्यों एंड उराज्यों उसके साथ हमें ऑर्गेनिक जाना पड़ेगा हमारी कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन क्या है हाउ कैन वी इंटरवीन देयर 
rather than uh, hijacking somebody's constituency. Yes, I am universal at some stage. I do believe in Vaishvikta and all that. But somewhere we are also Deshi. Our Deshi is our language. Let's talk about the language. Tell me. Tell me. It's like that actually I have written this book uh, in a kind of Marathi which is slightly, not slightly, uh, removed from the standard Marathi. जिसको महाराष्ट्र में पेठी है मराठी कहते हैं, ठीक है प्रमाण भाषा और उसमें मेरी मदर टंग का यूसेज जहाँ जहाँ मेरी मदर बोल रही वो ऐसे के ऐसे रखा है मैंने अहिरानी लखनऊ में तो हिंदी का यूज किया है फ्रांस में तो फ्रेंच सेंटेंसेस है इटली में हूँ तो मैं इटालियन शब्द है ऐसे मैंने ऐसे uh, and then after two months, I got the manuscript. I just couldn't recognize that it was my manuscript. Unko aise laga ki maine galat Marathi mein likhe beja. Aur unhe sida kar diya. I said, aur jaha jaha wherever I had used Ahirani, bracket me unhe Marathi pariyai vachi shabd diye the. Then I called the publisher, a good friend of ours, comrade Rajan Bhavdekar, and Sandeep Bandare. Maine kaha ki, see, actually I don't think I am going to publish it, if that is how you people want to publish it. Then they understood, sir, jo waha pe jo praman bhaasha mein unho ne bheja hai, wo aap dasbe mein dal do. Aap ko jaisa chahiye, wo aise publish karin. Mainne ka ki is mein khali mujhe ras ho dirga yaad nahi, utna thik karo, baakke aise ke aise publish karo aap. Is mein aap sentence ni change karenge, is mein aap koi shabd replace ni karenge, aise ke aise karo. And then I asked them one, one particular question that, Wherever I have used Dairani, my mother tongue, you have given in bracket its translation, but you have not given translation to French, German, and uh, Italian. Kya apke ghar mein ye sab language boli jati hai? This is attitude problem. I said, you are ready to do efforts for French, German, Italian, but in Dairani, you are in the middle of the house, you are in the house, you are in the house, and you are in the house. This is the language, dialect, social linguistic competence. नहीं है फिर भी एक कैसे category how it is instrumentalized to deprive people so this is an example I said yes किसी का अनुवाद नहीं होगा as now it is being read everywhere in Maharashtra questions yeah lots of questions but I did have maybe a quick question about your time and times and there are many things that we could have actually touched upon but maybe we are running out of time so we can take the questions from the floor uh, so the first question is in, uh, it's about, uh, so I'm just going to kind of shorten this. The question is about uh, SCST and OBC students and the difficulty that they have in PhD vivas. And also the fact that if you look at all the colleges in Delhi University, there is absolutely no representation at the top level. The principals, you know, are there are no principles from SEST backgrounds, right? So, what is the reason you think for this kind of discriminatory uh, practice and what can be done about it? So actually, the reason everybody knows and we don't want to know, that is caste. Caste is a huge uh, reality. Uh, and for example, I'll give some examples. In my book, I am very frank. Uh, once it comes in, uh, in Hindi, इसको थोड़ा सा कैंपस में थोड़ा सा तो प्रॉब्लम होगा कुछ लोगों को, because when I finished my undergrad in my town धुरे, after that even in इफ्लू आई डिनर टेन क्लासेस, because मेरा मानना है कि it is critic of my own fraternity that is teaching community कि दस में से दो तीन ही लोग मेहनत करके पढ़ाते हैं जिनका क्लास अटेंड करने का मन करता है छात्रों का और बाकी जो सात लोग हैं उनको यदि पूछा जाए कि भाई व्हाट इज़ द लास्ट टेक्स्ट दैट यू रेड विथ गुड अमाउंट ऑफ़ कंसंट्रेशन वो अपॉइंटमेंट लेटर होता है उनका और एंड देन एंड देन माय स्ट्रेटजी वाज़ नॉट टू अटेंड डोस क्लासेस एट ऑल तो मेरा इफ़ लुक का ट्रांसक्रिप्ट देखेंगे तो मुझे एक इसमें ए मैं कुछ भी लिखूं मुझे सी माइनस ही मिलेगा और जेएनयू में भी होता है जेएनयू में भी होता है तो 
मुझे पता है कि आप कैसे वैल्यूएट करते हैं आई एम सिटिंग ऑन द अदर साइड ऑफ द टेबल मुझे सब पता है और मैंने उसके बारे में लिखा भी है हमारे मतलब जो कल बात की कि वट अबाउट क्वालिटी एजुकेशन एज इफ क्वालिटी एजुकेशन इज समथिंग वेरीफाइड न्यूट्रल वैल्यू न्यूट्रल हवा वाली चीज है नहीं वो दैट इज अ पॉलिटिकल थिंग मतलब पीपल आर नॉट गुड एट यू नो अचीविंग क्वालिटी एजुकेशन सो वन हैज टू एट द नोशन ऑफ मेरिट आई हैव रिटन ब्लंटली इन माई बुक इन द नेम ऑफ मेरिट कास्ट इज प्रैक्टिस आई हैव सीन एंड हैव डिनाउंस दैम इन पब्लिक फॉरम्स I have seen, uh, and you know, people are kind of you know. Ha, huh, I understand, but we have to think about merit. Man, kar merit kar ke to kya? Because I have seen that. Main to if I am here, I say with with absolute pride that because of Mandal Commission, I am here. Even because I have faced this, I have not faced the discrimination that you know S C S T people face, but I have faced very subtle forms of discrimination, uh, and. I do have five masters. I have a masters in French philosophy from France. फिर भी मैं दावे के साथ बोल सकता हूँ कि जो OBC reservation नहीं होता ना मैं यहाँ पे नहीं बैठा होता। And there is that Maxwell's demon, that Maxwell's demon is guarding his entry points and will throw you out in the name of some goddamn merit. तो मैंने देखा है, अनुभव किया है क्योंकि बस आप मुझे पसंद नहीं करते क्योंकि मेरा जो critic है वो because I am not apologetic because In the beginning, uh, to exist for us, I come from that background. That to exist is kind of you know kind of a crime. Or उसका मतलब problem express करना वो भी हमें बहुत carefully express करने होते हैं. उस मतलब hurt ना हो जाए तो कमाल है यार. So then slowly, gradually, French philosophy taught me to be slightly nasty. This is what we call Voltairean vein. Okay, and Voltaire used to say, "You are nasty. Ah, nastiness is my national institution." So, So that is my political tool. My close friends know that what I mean by that. Because मेरे को तुम भी आदत डालो क्योंकि हमें तो आदत सी हो गई कि कदम कदम पे humiliation बर्दाश्त करने की. तुम ही कभी कबार थोड़ा अपमानित होता कि तुम ही बड़े झटके लगते हैं. क्योंकि आदत डालो भाई आदत डालो थोड़ी सी आदत डालो. Justice मतलब adjust करो लोगों को. और ऊपर से बोलना तो बंद ही कर दो. ऊपर से बोलना तो बिल्कुल बंद कर दो. ठीक है सो ये जो क्रिटिक है ये डेलीबरेटली वोल्टेरियन स्टाइल में मैंने लिखा है मैं बहुत गांधीवादी भी तरीके से लिख सकता था मैंने नहीं लिखा है देखो मतलब मुझे अभी महाराष्ट्र में इनविटेशन जो आते हैं मैक्सिमम फुले अंबेडकर राइट ग्रुप से आते हैं ठीक है उसके बाद गांधीवादियों से भी आते हैं एनसीपी से भी आते हैं कांग्रेस से भी आते हैं डावे मजे वामपंथियों से भी आते हैं मैं सबका स्वीकार करता हूँ खाली मैं बोल दू की आर का इन्विटेशन नहीं लूंगा मैं क्योंकि कॉमी इफ यू आस्क मी लाइक सम पीपल क्रिटिक बट यू वर नेवर एक्टिव इन स्टूडेंट पॉलिटिक्स यू वर नेवर एक्टिव ओनली टू थाउजेंड सिक्सटीन ऑनवर्ड्स यू बिकम एक्टिव आई सी यस दैट इज ट्रू बट आई वाज डीपली पॉलिटिकल डीपली पॉलिटिकल बिकॉज फॉर मी आई हैव टेकन माय स्टैंड एवरी टाइम एंड द प्रिंसिपल ऑन विच विथ विच आई टेक माई स्टैंड दैट इज प्रिंसिपल ऑफ डेमोक्रेटाइजिलिटी आई फाइंड दैट नो बडी इज एब्सोल्युटली डेमोक्रेटिक बिकॉज दैट इज द एंड ऑफ एंड ऑफ हिस्ट्री we are there is some possibility of democratizability if we have that good faith and some faith in that you know constitutional framework so gandhivad or all this i am not doctrinal that is for sure but wherever there is possibility of dialogue possibility of democratizability ability to democratize that space i am ready to go and interact with them i i will not say i just go to that section that because they have some different degree of democratizability and i have to interact with them otherwise if i just talk to my constituency means my ideological framework it's like a baker selling the bread to a baker and it doesn't it's like echo chamber of which we are often accused uh this is from i think a student from iimc uh and the person has named himself so i'll read out his name rajgopal chaudhary and he says that you know there are lots of student movements uh some of these are led by just a handful of people and they sometimes are successful but often peter out mm. there are two students who are still sitting on protest strike in imc and how can students inspire their movement so that it does not die yeah that's a very good question actually uh and in this respect jnu has played a huge role and jnu will take some time to evaluate its impact on indian society that jnu was quite confined to this space 
but when JNU was attacked, it really went to villages, places, and universities. And those universities, like in Maharashtra, I can see that those student movements actually they they didn't know about JNU uh, much about JNU, and now they think that it's very important to to protest. This protest was stigmatized in those universities, like you know, uh, many like uh, Marathwada, uh, Bamu University, uh, uh, Savitribai Phule uh, University. The students that is actually JNU that contribution. One thing. Second thing, JNU has that intrinsic spirit because the way social sciences are taught here, the way humanities are taught here, the way social, human, cultural facts are analyzed, critiqued, and theorized here, because. It's natural sciences or natural facts, technical facts to analyze them uh, in a very technocratic manner takes a very different paradigm. But analyzing socio cultural human facts, it takes different paradigm because it, these facts have been constituted historically through different different processes. And that 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 model, genuine model of teaching social sciences, explains that student after one or two years, o kuch sochna shuru karta hai. और बाकी के यूनिवर्सिटीज में जो इंस्ट्रूमेंटल लॉजिक ज्यादा है इंस्ट्रूमेंटल लॉजिक ऑफ टीचिंग लाइक इट इज यूजफुल इट इज प्रैक्टिकल एंड दैट इंट्रेंसिक आइडिया ऑफ एजुकेशन इज मिसिंग देयर देयरफॉर स्टूडेंट्स नो मैटर काइंड ऑफ यू नो हाउ हार्ड यू एक्सप्लेन जेन्यू स्पिरिट दे फेल टू अंडरस्टैंड बिकॉज़ इन देयर स्टडी और इन देयर क्लासेस दिस दिस क्रिटिकलिटी इज मिसिंग self criticality criticality that you know criticality literally it means actually discerning tenable from untenable criticality is not to dismissing it but every fact will have something tenable because every fact is heterogeneous contradictory uh, and dynamic contingent so one has to analyze it and social fact is particularly difficult dynamic and ever changing so that criticality is missing in those spaces तो दिस स्टूडेंट दे जस्ट और जेएनयू में होता है हमारे यहां पे क्यों नहीं होता है क्योंकि उनका जो ये ये पूरा एक एक यहां पे एक एंबियंस है जेएनयू इज एन एंबियंस वेयर स्टूडेंट्स दिस डिस्कशन स्पेसेस व्हिच आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ढाबा एंड ऑल दिस थिंग्स दिस स्पेसेस आर लैकिंग देयर और दिस क्लासरूम इज जस्ट अ काइंड ऑफ यू नो अ स्मॉल स्पेस इन जेएनयू देयर आर बिगर स्पेसेस दिस स्पेस आई थिंक दिस स्पेसेस वी डोंट सी मोर एंड मोर इफ वी क्रिएट दिस स्पेसेस इन दोस यूनिवर्सिटीज दे विल दे विल आल्सो गेट इनटू क्रिटिकलिटी सो these are related questions and i think i'll ask them together because you'll just make your way of you know your answer um, more compressed so one is about uh, from a student who was in flu between 2009 and 14 when uh, the campus saw a very vibrant rise of ambedkar act politics and this is when he had his first fundamental lesson on caste and he says this continues in gnu In the last few years, the Ambedkarite student politics has asserted itself not just in opposition to the right wing, but also to the left as well. If you could share your thoughts on this, especially in the context of the last few years and the current political context, that's one question. Then this is a question that has come with two question marks next to the first sentence, which means it's obviously raising some very fundamental issues. Which is, Jain, you, आपको कितना progressive लगता है? In terms of caste, two question marks. जहाँ OBC reservation 2006 में apply किया गया जाता है और वही EWS तुरंत लागू किया जाता है. And um, this is from Atika, I think. How do you look at left faculty equating politics of Babsa with ABVP? And this is also a related question: How to stop appropriation of Dalit leaders in parties like Congress and BJP? What's the way forward to capture political power? <laughs> and all these questions uh, is, it, is it over? There are many more. Oh, many. On yes, a similar yes, vein, yes. I'll leave this. Should I leave them out? Yeah, if uh, like they more or less are overlapping. Okay, so, okay. And so do you think it's possible for us to ever have a Hinduism in which will? in actuality be equal for all should we work to reform the religion or rather denounce it since it is inherently brahmanical is it even possible to reform a religion that is deeply embedded in graded inequality uh this is i think um, yeah this is so you mentioned that you tried to cheat in your class 10th english exam So my question is how do you perceive that if a student cheats in his exams one is it his individual failure 
two or the failure of the teacher. <laughs> Three, the failure of the entire education system. Four, what you will do if your student tries to cheat in your exam. <laughs> I'll, I'll answer the first question, the uh, last question first, uh, because it's a uh, hilarious question. Uh, see, uh, I never liked exams myself. I mean, I never liked uh, school actually. So I say that I am an error in the system. Uh, <laughs> error in the system, either I, I, would, I should be thrown out or I will do something to the system. So uh, I students that I say that I will not take my exam. I say that I will you come to my class, not because I want you to come to my class. If you feel like coming, you come to my class. That's that much like uh, you can ask my students. Uh, and if you find that my teaching is relevant to you uh, in your particular situation, then only you come to my class. Uh, just because you are not coming to my class, I'm not going to penalize you. Because I don't go to class, I say it. I close my mouth and I've also closed it. But I will say that you will not penalize for that. Whatever you know, but just that you should be in good faith and do minimum of what you can do. Uh, just because uh, if you can sit in the lab, if you can sit in the library and do far better than uh, you know what you could have done after attending the classes, I mean you, I, I, I would respect you. So that is the actually my take on it. Uh, and now those all those questions, the previous questions, if I uh, answer them together, uh, see. Uh, OBC reservation, SCST and all that. So I'll just small uh, anecdote, not anecdote, perception about me. Uh, this, uh, this glitter and this uh, light, uh, it is a very recent phenomenon for me, like one and a half years, because what's happening in Maharashtra. Uh, before that, uh, till 2016, I was not that much visible because I had decided not to be visible and rather to see things rather than to be seen. That was my uh, epistemological strategy. Uh, but then in 2017 onwards, uh, Babsa started inviting me. And quite frequently. So I had to listen to Babsa. I hope that Babsa is a teacher. I said that he is inviting me, so I have to pin down. I mean, you have to understand him to his life. Because you have to mute me in which way या इनविजिबलाइज किए हो और आपके रेगुलर पोस्टर बॉय या पोस्टर पर्सन कौन होते हैं ठीक है आपकी पॉलिटिक्स है लेकिन यदि बापसा मुझे वो स्पेस दे रही है तो आप मुझे फिर अपमानित कर रहे हो वो बापसा का टीचर है बिकॉज बापसा स्टार्टेड इनवाइटिंग दैट इज वन थिंग एंड अबाउट दिस एस सी एस टी ओबीसी वो तो इट्स लाइक यू नो इट्स ट्रीजम आई मीन दे नो फॉर बेटर देन मी Because and I have I have spoken about it in my book uh, that you know is it a really genuine realization that you know one is now saying Jai Bhim because in 2004 I didn't hear that were we not enough intelligent at that time or we became all of a sudden intelligent now or it is a tactical thing बहुत खतरनाक शब्द है tactical thing so ये see for me if I do not give that latitude. My philosophy is not doctrinal. Because if I pin down you to your point of departure, then I am accusing, I will stand accused of what I am accusing you. You know, I, if I essentialize you that, you know, there is no possibility of dialogue between you and me, then actually I am essentializing you. So for me, my, uh, my philosophy doesn't allow me that essentialization. There can be critique, harsh critique, but if there is a possibility of democratizability, I am ready for that. So actually, I navigate because OBC is also a very rich space, a corridor wall space. Either कभी 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 doubt करता है, उधर कभी करता है। कभी कभी मुझे मतलब हमारे SST मित्रों वो बहुत close friends हैं, लेकिन वो कभी SST crowd crowd में भी ले जाते थे, तो मुझे सुना ही पड़ता, अपना है क्या? ये भी मैंने सुना है। But for me, like you know. SCST concrete crowd came later. My philosophical convictions came prior to that. They started inviting me after uh, listening to me, uh, and I am fully Ambedkarite by my own convictions. I 
stand in no need of validation of this organization or that organization. Uh, I will remain even if my even if I get kind of you know individual some unpleasant experience, but those experiences like people अभी मुझे बोलते कि नहीं नहीं हमने गोबर खाना इसलिए शुरू किया कि वामपंथी ऐसा करते थे ये कोई reason ही नहीं सकता मतलब मैं भी वामपंथी को critique करता हूँ but that cannot justify your joining something that is pernicious to Indian democracy that cannot be the ground if you can critique critique it तो so, मुझे लगता है कि ये जो नेवल गेजिंग है कुछ लोगों का मतलब लेफ्ट मैं तो एक्चुअली जब फ्रांस में रहता हूं तो मैं अपने आप को लेफ्ट ही समझता हूं यू लेफ्ट होता क्या है पहले वो भी ना हम इसलिए मैंने शब्द यूज किया है मराठी में शीघ्र शीघ्र मार्क्स वाली शीघ्र मतलब बिना पढ़े बिना समझे ठीक है बस अच्छा लगता है मतलब बिना पढ़े क्योंकि अच्छा लगता है वो जो गुड कॉन्शियस सस्ते में खरीदने वाली बात है और वामपंथियों का नफरत भी वही करते बिना पड़े तो मतलब व्हेन आई डिड माय माय एम फिल इन शेफील्ड डेलीबेटली आई सिलेक्टेड द कोर्सेस ऑन मार्क्सिज्म मैंने कहा कि हमारे यहां पे बहुत चलता है <laughs> <laughs> तो मेरा प्रॉब्लम यह है कि इट इज एक्चुअली आई कीप सेइंग इन मोस्ट ऑफ माय इंटरवेंशन दैट मोस्ट ऑफ प्रॉब्लम्स आर ड्यू टू आर मिस एंड लैक ऑफ एजुकेशन एंड ड्यू टू आर इग्नोरेंस So good deal of our problems would be solved, resolved if we are in good faith and give some latitude and little bit generous towards each other. So that is my actually uh, political philosophy. Philosophy is actually the point of arrival that we all agree about. That constitutional framework, there should be just order and all that. Good smooth. But now, how to operate? If I say that this is appropriate, this is appropriate, this is appropriate, this is appropriate, then I have two or three other things that will remain in my mind. और दूसरी मैं और एक बात बताता हूं इसे चलते हुए ये मुझे बड़ा अजीब सा लगा था आई विल नॉट नेम दैट दैट यू नो स्टॉलवर्ड टीचर हु वाज जेन्युइनली प्रेसिडेंट ड्यूरिंग हिज स्टूडेंट डेज व्हेन दिस स्टूडेंट एजिटेशन वाज टेकिंग प्लेस ऑन हिज आई तो मैं तब लिखने लगा था तो आई हैव रिटन दैट इन स्टूडेंट्स फ्रॉम डिप्राइव्ड बैकग्राउंड्स पुअर बैकग्राउंड्स Uh, I mean, students. Forty uh, percent students from uh, uh, poor and deprived backgrounds should be thrown out of the university. ये था. उनके नीचे उन्होंने comment किया था. T A K भी वो बहुत अच्छे president रह चुके. कि शरद not only poor students, but even students who are from well respected background. मैंने कहा सर poor students भी well respected background से यहाँ होते हैं. और मैंने screenshot लेके रखा है कि किसी को लग रहा है कि मैं कुछ मतलब है मेरे पास <laughs> लेकिन फिर भी मैंने कहा चलो यार इग्नोरेंस होता है बट नहीं मानते ना हम अपना मान लेते हैं और वो अपना मतलब अपराध भी समझते हैं लेकिन सामने वाला इग्नोरेंस को नॉलेज को कन्वर्ट करके जैसे अलू ने कहता रहा था प्रोटेक्टेड इग्नोरेंस बहुत बड़ा हथियार है प्रोटेक्टेड इग्नोरेंस ये हम मानते नहीं कि इग्नोरेंस है in I, this conversation here but this is just a temporary pause because i think there will be many other platforms where this conversation yes. can continue i only asked half the question that i have to be sharat let and me the actually, last question we couldn't ask. let me let me thank all of you actually you know you people make this university uh, and my gratitude to jnpa for to organize this very important initiative that we have galvanized the university so we leave we leave with this book cover and it's now available in hindi so with that love